Hello everybody. It's March 25th, 2015. Around 8.20 a.m. Walking the big guy. And uh, I thought I'd just try and get a quick video in this morning addressing the fact that in the production of the Pipulate demo, I used tools such as GIMP and Inkscape quite a bit. Probably a little bit more uh, GIMP than Inkscape in that case. But nonetheless, I am finally coming around to doing what I've long intended, which is to break my Adobe software addiction in favor of the dominant players of each category in free and open source. Dominant enough that I'm willing to uh, place a somewhat long-term bet on in learning how to use each package. And I'm finally starting to get down the basics of GIMP in which so much web development work these days is tied to the ability to create PNG files that have the appropriate alpha transparencies so that they can layer with other graphics and uh, basically eliminate the need for a lot of tricks that you had to do to get the visual effects that you wanted. Now it's become incredibly versatile where you can have multiple rectangular graphics, each of which has its own variable transparencies and they can animate. They can be animated elements that layer on top of each other and slide around with the appropriate transparency effects staying intact, which is a fairly miraculous thing. And this can just be done right in the browser. And it doesn't even all have to be converted into PNG files. You can get those same transparency effects, albeit I don't think with the gradiencies, but transparencies nonetheless with SVG files, which are structured graphics uh, or uh, vector, if you prefer. But basically, uh, Inkscape does structured graphics, and that is the rough equivalent to Adobe Illustrator or those people from the old school days, Aldis Freehand. And uh, GIMP is the very rough equivalent of Photoshop. Now, Photoshop and Illustrator have evolved into so, so much more than they once were after decades of, you know, being in the hot seat of being the primary tool of graphic develop designers, and, you know, and production people around the world. And it's gotten to the point now where if you, like, want to be in the graphics, graphic arts guild, you've got to pay your monthly or annual dues to the graphics guild, i.e. Adobe. And if you don't want your software installs to be tied to particular hardware instances, you get the Adobe Cloud Suite, and then you can just install whatever you need that Adobe writes software-wise, at least Creative Studio, on any machine that you happen to be working on, so long as it's not an ARM-based tablet. And you can use the software and have access to your files. So it's a combination of a web-based install and a web-based drive. Now, this is awesome if you're a graphics professional. But if you're just a person like me who occasionally does some documentation and web design and development stuff on the side, it's not your main thing, it's not what you get paid for at your day job, you don't really want to pay the dues for the Graphic Design Guild, nor do you necessarily want to invest your time and energy into learning and mastering a piece of software that you're just going to have to keep paying to keep using. It makes much more sense. You get 80% of the benefit from the first 20% of your investment of time, and of course zero investment of money because it's free and open source, when you go with software packages like GIMP for all your bitmap needs and Inkscape for all your structured vector drawing. And there's a few more categories. You'll probably never get page layout. That seems to be one that really resists the free and open source world, at least with a 
a user interface. There is latex for making textbooks and stuff, but uh, nothing with a, a GUI that is the equivalent of Adobe InDesign or even Quark Express or PageMaker or any of that stuff. But uh, who needs it? That's the paper world. We're leaving that behind. The other software categories that remain are 3D design and modeling. On the, uh, on the design side, it's not so strong on the free and open source world. There's, uh, I guess, things like, I think it was Google SketchUp, which has entered back into the, I'm not sure, I, I, it's hard to speak to that, but on the computer-aided design world, the kind of stuff you would use to create uh, models for 3D printers, uh, I don't know if there's a dominant category killer there right now. It's one of the things I'm investigating. But on modeling, on just molding the 3D sh shapes, there is Blender. And Blender, as an added bonus, also has a video editor. So that takes care of another category. Blender, you must learn and master because it is clearly the alternative to Maya and uh, 3D Studio Max, I think it is, and a bunch of others. Uh, um, let's see. Uh, video toaster light light wave light wave 3d uh, with my Amiga background how dare I forget that one but blender is the free and open source entry into the 3d modeling world video editor included so you get that for just you know like this editing YouTube videos that's could be part of blender and uh, then that leaves over one of the categories most dear to my heart I never really mastered it myself but I've always pictured 2D animation being one of the most effective communication means. I tend to dislike PowerPoint for storytelling, although I use it and things like it. And uh, I imagine a smooth story flow with actors and paths much the way Adobe Flash has it set up. But for all the reasons I've outlined why Adobe is hard to use over the years as your primary graphics platform, I have never truly mastered Flash. And nor do I really want to now, with it going out of style and HTML5 stuff coming into style. And I'm looking at something called Synfig. There's also Pencil. But right now, Synfig looks like the best equivalent or alternative to Adobe Flash for 2D animation, i.e. cartoons and storytelling without getting bogged down by all the issues of 3D software. Now, whether 3D software is a bog down or not, I guess is somewhat subjective. If you've mastered 3D software, you might go poof, poof, poof. Here's all the things you could do in Synfig, but I did it in Blender. But I don't wanna have to get good enough at Blender to get 2D animation. I want to just sit down and start using it uh, in, in a way that will be with me for many years uh, without having to repay and upgrade and get into that, that vicious cycle. Uh, so Synfig, it probably is. So I'm using GIMP and Inkscape on almost a, not a daily basis, but every time it comes up and I'm getting better and better at them. And so half my free and open source visual communication software plan is coming together, GIMP and Inkscape. The other side, Blender and Synfig. While I've had Blender installed time to time over the years, I certainly never have with Synfig. I have got a steep learning cur curve ahead of me indeed on the two graphics pieces of software that take time and movement into account. But I'll probably do it, especially Blender, and when the time is right, see if I can't work that into my daughter Adiella's homeschool education. Uh, I think being able to tell stories with software tools is right up there with a lot of the uh, information age literacy skills. So there you have it. These are my thoughts on free and open source graphic communication software and how it fits into my current adventure and what my plans are. And I'll make videos like these and tutorials and stuff on each of these pieces of software to help everyone out there 
go through the same process of breaking their graphic artists guild software addiction and uh, necessity to pay that fee every year. Thanks for joining me. Hope to talk to you soon and don't forget to subscribe.